Welcome to the Expert Talks by Calkine TV. I'm Sage. Today's guest is Dr. Lorenzo Conti, founder and managing director at Crover. You may have heard of the Svalbard Seed Vault, launched back in 2008 in an icy mountain in Norway. After undergoing an upgrade due to leakage, the vault was opened in February 2020 to deposit seeds from India, Pakistan and Syria. And Crover is on a mission to help grain storage operators reduce losses and maintain optimum storage conditions. And this will aid the United Nations goal of eliminating hunger by 2030. So we're going to find out more today from Dr. Lorenzo Conti about how Crover maps the conditions inside grain bulks to identify suboptimal storage conditions as well as mixing the grain in situ which helps maintain their quality. So I'm very excited to bring to you live today Dr. Lorenzo Conti, Managing Director at Crover. Welcome to the show Lorenzo. Thank you for having me. We are so honoured to have you here being the Enterprise Fellow at the Royal Academy of Engineering and having made breakthroughs during your doctorate research in granular physics at University of Edinburgh. Thank you so much for having some time for us. So what have been some of your favourite breakthrough innovations in the grain supply chain in the past few years? Uh, I think there's quite a lot of choice, but beyond our own innovation, I would say one of the things that impressed me the most has been some of the developments in electrophysiology, like what our friends at Vivent in Switzerland are doing for uh, translating effectively the electrical signal transmitted by plants and interpreting them into what the plants actually need, which has uh, shown in the recent years like significant uh, room for delivering great uh, improvements in the way uh, plants are taken care of and grown. That is amazing. Wow, what a fantastic space you work in. The intelligence of plants is now being converted into AI. Is that correct? More or less, yeah, you could say that. <laughs> That is amazing. So how does Crover help grain storage operators reduce losses and maintain optimum storage conditions, please? What we've been developing is a grain storage management system, at the core of which you have the Crover robot, which is effectively the world's first uh, subterranean drone, in the sense of a device able to uh, propel itself through uh, granular media. So any assembly of uh, solid discrete particles, so anything from uh, uh, sand dunes, uh, in case anyone is a fan of the movie Dune, that, that's, you know, our kind of thing, to anything like uh, bull, you know, uh, mineral bulks, chemical powders, and grain bulks, which has really been our focus so far. So we've been developing the system where you have the crew robots swimming through grain in bulk, so things like wheat and barley in silos and sheds, and as it's moving through, it measures temperature, moisture, and stock levels for now, to wear plants for extending those sensing capabilities and also it mixes the grain in situ as it's moving through which helps maintain their quality keep them more aerated and also help avoid problems like crusting on the surface so all together is helping uh, identify critical conditions early and also to some extent uh, maintain the quality of that grain uh, directly that's amazing. So how does this come into play with things like GMO and genetic modification and maintaining biodiversity? Does this help with that as well? Well, we only take care of whatever comes into storage, so we can't, you know, change what seed comes mm -hmm. into storage, uh, but it can help reduce the amount of uh, chemicals and pesticides used uh, to maintain the, the quality of, uh, of the stock. So it, it enables people to implement uh, more efficient uh, integrated pest management practices, as they're called, uh, which usually means uh, keeping an accurate eye on the temperature and the moisture of that grain and keeping those parameters within a safe threshold that, that hinders uh, or entirely prevents the growth on uh, uh, infestations like uh, insects and molds because any any grain coming from the field will have uh, some level of biological entity the key is making sure that those are not able to grow and damage the grain and usually these things have an average incubation time that is of uh, of a few weeks 
uh, just to give the example of green weevils, which is the most common type of, uh, of green insect. They have an average incubation of eight weeks. The problem is that usually people don't detect a problem in the early onset. You only see it when it's reached kind of some exponential growth type of stage. And they think that it's just happened all of a sudden. But if you have a system like ours, you, you know, the, the idea is that you can detect it early and then uh, prevent it altogether. Thank you for clarifying that for us. I do appreciate it. So a sustainable world should be everyone's vision and mission. How can growers reduce grain losses due to spoilage, please? Uh, we're again using uh, integrated pest management and more, um, you know, more efficient uh, grain storage practices and maintaining the quality of the grain uh, within uh, safe thresholds and parameters. You can make sure that infestations do not develop, do not damage the grain, and hence, uh, you know, fulfill our mission, which is, uh, as we call it, you know, uh, saving grains. Uh, but it really means, uh, you know, making sure that the same quality of grain that goes into storage is not that comes out. Uh, and that's really what, uh, what we're wrote to, to make sure, because uh, right now, uh, the grain storage phase represents a single phase in the midstream of the supply chain with the highest losses. And it's a lot significant room for, for improvement in, in the efficiency of how those grain are monitored. And, and uh, I believe I heard a fact recently, I'm not sure if it's right, but that there's like 200,000 different varieties of even just rice. So um, to get that vast genetic diversity, are mutations required? And how do mutations still evolve in your grain storage facilities? Um, well, the, probably the, the most important in terms of diversity for us is the fact that some, uh, some species are, are more popular because they're more resistant, they can last longer. But if you have a tool that is in the, you know, element in the quality species, you will have a lower risk even with variety. Someone is not, not boring but they're, you know, maintaining the condition of those is still risky. Okay, thank you so much. So the core technology behind the Krover robot, which sounds very exciting, comes from years of research in granular physics and rheology. Could you tell us a little bit more about the technology that you use at Krover, especially remote automation capabilities of robotics devices? Yeah, so, so our main uh, technology is the method for locomotion, so for moving through uh, granular media so types of environments like those green boards and you as I was saying earlier. Um, so kind of Krover started from uh, discovering during my PhD uh, not physical effects be possible to move through this type of environments. And in short, what we discovered is that there is a coupling between rotational and translational motion in this type of environment. In simple terms, if you're rotating even a symmetric object like a sphere or a ceiling there, a body centroid in there, that rotation uh, generates a pressure differential from one side to the other that makes the object move through. So it's like plane wings, but for underground, <laughs> let's say. And that, that's really, you know, uh, our core technology that we managed to protect through a UK patent and international patent filings in the top uh, seven Americas across the world. So really what enabled us to uh, build the, the first, uh, uh, you know, granular drone or as we came up with that word because really there was no dictionary word to describe a device that can that could move through environments. So that that's really our core technology. And then we think uh, um, you know, the green storage uh, monitor that I was talking about earlier. We're working on making it fully autonomous to also avoid the green storage operators having to walk on top of the green box, which is is time consuming and uh, um, you know it creates a lot of risks for grain storage operators so we show that they can stop doing that finally oh that's good to hear so you are ultimately helping the people in the future not have to revert to eating mealworms hopefully and <laughs> we can continue eating grain because uh, you know, there might be a point in time where food becomes more scarce. So what is in the pipeline for Krover in 2022? Uh, we have a lot planned. I mean, the, the main focus right now is in completing the pilots that we have with our 
Netherlands in the in the and in Italy and uh, starting uh, uh, first commercial units of the proper uh, search management system. Um, another you know exciting thing that we're going through right now is we're just setting up our own uh, product testing and self certification uh, facility and uh, uh, one of the uh, you know many things that we have done uh, through the year is we started working recently on um, you know a new some new sensing developments basically developing a global sensor to detect uh, uh, and measure parameters is only possible to measure in the lab right now we're trying to basically take those labments directly into the pool that's probably you know uh, some of the most exciting things that we're doing right now so there's quite a lot happening at the moment absolutely and food security has definitely come more into the spotlight since the recent russia ukraine crisis as well as so much grain comes from there thank you so much dr lorenzo conti for your time today and your insights we really appreciate it thank you and thanks for watching here at Calkine. We had a very interesting discussion with Dr. Lorenzo Conti, and he works for Crova as a managing director. Keep watching for more of the live expert talks and market insights until the next episode. Stay apprised and invest wise with Calkine Media.